Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture series of Advanced Java. I am Shruti Agnik and today we are going to see something about spring. Spring is something which will alight you and excite you a lot because spring is something which is currently used in the modern development industry. Okay, so spring here we are going to see a little bit of introduction in this video lecture. We will see what spring actually is, how it works, what is its architecture what are beans and what is the life cycle of bean and we are going to see a very small application of how a actual spring program works which are the files which are used in a spring program. So let us begin. We shall begin with the basic introduction of spring. Now whenever you have the word spring you have the MVC framework along with it. Now MVC is model view controller. Now model is nothing but your bean file or your pojo file where you have the getter setters. You have a controller which is nothing but a dispatcher servlet in this case. This dispatcher servlet is going to work as a controller and it is going to route your request from one place to another. And you have your view. View is nothing but the HTML page that is displayed in form of a response on the client browser. Okay, so Spring actually is a Java web application framework which works on the basis of MVC. You can design robust applications, you can uh, design enterprise applications. So when uh, you can do all these things with simple Java also, you can do the same thing with uh, why require Spring when you can do the same thing with servlets, when you can do the same thing with JSP. You require Spring because it is very robust. It has various features which is going to make Spring more usable and more uh, a better option as compared to the others and it can be used for developing robust as well as very uh, long applications or enterprise applications. So if you are making a very standalone application you can use any other uh, thing apart from Spring but if your project is very long you have to do a lot of tasks or you have to develop some enterprise kind of application it is better to use spring the basic reason is it is high uh, giving you high performance it is very easily testable and the code can be reused you can add functionalities as and when needed with very minimal changes and it makes development a much more easy task as compared to the others let us see the various advantages of using spring now the advantages is it is lightweight container, lightweight container because whatever code you develop can be reused, okay, you just need to provide a reference and you can reuse the code, you don't need to code it again, it makes uh, coding uh, modular, okay, you are developing in terms of modules, you are doing works in small pieces, you are not integrating everything and making a very long file. Instead you are dividing your code into pieces and you are keeping all those pieces bifurcated or separated. Okay, it increases code readability because every specific file is dedicated for a specific work. So you have a dedicated file for everything and code can be readable, it can be understandable. You require no special deployment steps. Okay, and uh, there is a very loose coupling between modules or different pieces of codes that I told you. So uh, you can run a specific code, you can test for a specific code, but it is not necessary that you need some other code if you want to develop and test a single module. Okay, so this uh, work can be done independently. Also it, ha it gives you a lot of advantages when it helps you to uh, implement transactions, it helps you with caching. It helps you with logging, it helps you with formatting as well as validation and conversion. Now when all these things can be taking are taking place at a single place in spring, why do we go to other different frameworks? Okay, so uh, let us see further how the working of spring takes place. Spring here actually works on something called as a dispatcher servlet or a dispatch servlet. Now what is this dispatch servlet doing? It is having a total control over everything. It works as a controller where it is going to handle all the requests and route them at appropriate places. So let us say uh, for example you are getting an HTTP request from a client. The dispatcher servlet or a dispatch servlet is going to first hand it over to something called as a handler mapping. Now this handler mapping has the work of finding out which is a 
place or which is a controller which is supposed to handle this request. When this thing is done, it is giving a reply to the dispatcher servlet and this dis uh, dispatch servlet is going to go to something called as a appropriate controller. Now appropriate controller was found by the handler mapping and it was giving the uh, it is passing the request to the controller. The controller will do all the various functionalities or things or business logics that is supposed to do. It will handle your uh, uh, get or post method, it will handle your business logic, all these things will be taken care by the controller. The controller will then give the request back to the dispatch servlet and the dispatch servlet will move on to something called as a view resolver. Now this view resolver is a place where a proper view is created ok. So uh, it is giving you or resolving the name of the view that you want to redirect and display on the page. So when the view resolver gives a proper name of where the view can be resolved, a view is created ok. And this view is then by the dispatcher servlet given back to the client in form of response. So this is the basic working of Spring. We shall now move on to the architecture of Spring. Spring architecture basically consists of a Spring framework which is divided into five different parts. The first part is data access, second is web, third is AOP aspect and instrumentation, next is core container and next is your test. So these are the different uh, five layers or you can say uh, parts where you are dividing your spring framework into. We will first move on to data access integration. Data access integration is dealing with database connectivity, with mapping, mapping from POJO files to tables, mapping XML files and objects, doing transactions doing certain message uh, so, uh, java message services. So all these things are uh, taking place in data access integration. So it consists of JDBC which you are aware of, it helps you to write your SQL code or database connectivity code without worrying about any uh, you know uh, any uh, errors ok. You have your class loader, you have your com.mysql. In your ORM that is your object relational mapping, you are writing everything that is mapping your POJO file with your uh, table. This is your OXM that is your object to XML mapping which is doing uh, which we are doing in spring which we will be doing rather in the next uh, code that we are going to do and Java messaging services where you can have a middleware developed in spring which will help you to pass messages. You also have something called as transactions which is going to help you to manage transactions and the asset properties of the database ok. So this was all about data access integration. We shall now move on to web. Web is divided into four different parts where web functionality is something where you can upload something, you can download something, you can access a website. So all this comes under the web whereas servlet is possible to be developed here, portlet you can develop here, struts is also a framework in Java which is included here ok and all these servlet, portlet and struts they all can be implemented via MVC or model view controller framework. Next is AOP, AOP is aspect oriented programming where you can very easily include new functionalities or include new code or uh, adjust your new code into your old code. New functionalities can be added as and when without major changes that is called aspect oriented programming. Next is aspects, aspects is you can easily uh, integrate any module that you want into your code without making a uh, major changes ok. So uh, there is a very loose coupling between all the modules and you can add any module as and when required. Next is instrumentation, instrumentation is basically used for uh, class loaders ok. So if you want to load any class instrumentation is something that is going to be helpful to you here like you have your uh, com.mysql.jdbc.driver so you require to load that class so for that you need a class loader which will be available in instrumentation. 
Next we will move on to the testing part. The testing part is something where you can test all the different modules as I told you they are very uh, loosely coupled, they are not interdependent on each other in a spring framework. So, you can easily test each and every module individually that is what I meant by testing and the last is core container. Your core container is containing all these four parts where you have a very strong support of expression languages where uh, the thing that you studied in your uh, JSP and JSF you had your hash, you had your dollar sign, they all were your uh, expression languages. So, in spring 2 you have certain expression languages, your uh, context here which we are going to code in the next code that I am going to do. This context is a connection kind of file which is helping you to map your uh, POJO class with the uh, various uh, uh, POJO file with your uh, mean file ok uh, sorry POJO file with your uh, connector kind of mapping kind of file ok. So, you can create objects very easily with the help of your uh, context file you have your Java beans or you have your POJO file and you have your core. Core is your dependency injection functionality where if you have certain kind of dependency between the codes you can very easily integrate them, you can very easily bifurcate them ok. You can find out dependencies between code and you can uh, very easily handle such kind of code in core ok. So, all these are the ba basic spring architecture frameworks or uh, spring framework or architecture of spring. We shall now see the bean life cycle and in the bean life cycle we shall see what takes place or what is happening in the whole life cycle of a simple bean class or a simple POJO file. First of all you are starting your state, it is in a nothing state. Then your bean enters into the initialization state where your bean is initialized. Let us say for example, I have a POJO file say public class student or a class student. Inside student I have private variables say uh, name and I have integer uh, name and id. So, these two are private variables and I am having a getter setter of all these two for name as well as for id. Then it is initialized and object of the bean is created. When object of bean is created then bean is ready to be used and it enters into the activation state. It can be called for once or more than once or um, as many number of times ok. So, a bean can be accessed that is an activation phase and next enters the when the container is shut down. So, context is nothing but a container of your spring and this container is when shut down then it enters into the destruction phase and finally, its life cycle is over. So, this is what happens during the life cycle of a bean. Bean I am sure you have studied in Hibernate in your POJO file and as well as in your JSP when you were doing the use bean tag of JSP action tags ok. Next is a uh, uh, now we are going to develop a very simple spring application with the use of three different files. One is your bean or your POJO file, one is your context or your XML file or you can say it is a kind of a, a container for uh, spring files and you are going to view these things using a third file which is your public static void main or a caller file. So, let us begin with the coding. Hello dear students, welcome to the programming section of spring. Today we are going to develop a very simple spring application of just printing hello world. Before we start, let us see how you can build a spring project. You will go to new project, you will go to web application, next let us name it spring demonstration or spring demo. We will deploy it on Glassfish, we will click on spring web MVC framework. So, by default the library of spring framework 4.0.1 will be included and we will finish. You can see in the configuration your dispatcher here is dispatcher ok. So, dispatcher you know it is a kind of a controller which is helping you to route your request ok. So, this is how your project will look like 
it has web pages folder it has a source package libraries our spring framework 4.0.1 is already uh, included when we had that click okay and these are the configuration files in which you have your web.xml file also okay so this is basically how your project looks when you open your web.inf folder you will be able to see your dispatcher servlet your dispatcher servlet is the one which is responsible for routing the request okay we saw that whenever there is an http request coming or when you are running your spring program the request is first going to a uh, dispatcher servlet so your request will first come here on this particular page okay then it is going to move to your uh, handler mapping to your controller to view resolver and the view so all the controlling will be taking place via this dispatcher servlet okay now this context.xml application context.xml is your mapper file okay next file that we were going to make was a simple pojo file and third file was a view file so these both are actually java files your pojo file as well as view file so we need to create a simple package here let me name it package p1 now inside my package p1 i'm going to create a simple java class or a bean class or a pojo file let me name it hello world as i want to print hello world i should have kept h capital but it's fine now okay let me create a simple string kind of variable message here and let me put the getter setter of message here okay so this is my simple uh, hello world bean file or a message variable with a getter setter method next file is i'm going to create a context application kind of xml file now this is a mapper file which is going to map my this pojo file with the view resolver okay so here this file we are going to keep it in source packages okay so it will be here right okay in my context application or my mapper file i'm going to have these tags by default bean tag bean tag okay in this i will write a bean tag so this is my bean tag in my bean tag i have a property tag okay we will see what we are writing in this property okay now this bean tag consists of two attributes one is id which is you can give a name to this particular bean or id to a particular bean and a class class with which you want to map your file so i will have a p1 package in which i have a hello world class okay so this hello world class if i want to refer i can refer it by my bean also okay now property so here in my hello world class i have a property the property is message so here in my application context i can give name is equal to the name of my property which is message and i can give a value to this message whatever value i want to set in that message variable so i want to set hello world as i want to print hello world so this is what my mapper file is doing my this application context or the mapper file is having the id my bean and it is being mapped by hello world which is in p1 package and whatever variable message is there in this hello world file it will have the value hello world now what i have to do is i have to call the setter method of this hello world uh, of this message and set the value hello world in that variable then after i have to call the getter method of message and i have to print hello world on the screen okay so for this purpose i will have one third file the third file is my view file let me name it view finish okay now this is your public static void main method okay and here is your uh, main method so we have to run this code 
this is where you are going to do your actual spring code so you have to import org dot spring framework dot context dot support dot class path and import org dot spring framework dot context dot application context ok now what is this application context application context has to be imported if you want to make use of this mapper file without application context interface object you won't be able to call this application context dot xml so if at all i want to call this file i need to create an object of application context in my view file okay at application context is an interface and you cannot create its direct object okay so you have to create a an object of the class which is implementing the application context so application context object context is equal to new and now we are going to write the class that is going to implement the application context which is class path xml application context and inside this i am going to write the name of my dot xml file which is application it won't be prompted context dot xml okay okay so now you have uh, created a reference of application context with that you can call the bean that you want to call which is get bean now app context dot get bean get bean is returning t which is the class type okay so this application bean is going to give you uh, the uh, return to you the object of hello world class okay so here i can write either hello world dot class this is my first option or i can substitute here in form of uh, in uh, double quotes i can write this thing the id of the bean that is my bean okay so i have two options either i can write my bean or i can simply write hello world dot class these are the two options now you can see get bean is returning t okay so here i need to store it in hello world kind of object hw okay okay now using this hw i can call all the methods which are there in hello world okay so what i will do is i am going to directly have a get method and i am going to print the get method okay so s out let me write hw dot get message okay so this is how i can print my data now if i want to run this file first of all object will be created for application context it will move on to application context dot xml which is over here it will get to know that it is supposed to call hello world class from p1 package and it is also referenced by my bean and whatever message property is there call the setter method of message and store hello world into message okay it will return back here when it will return here it will move on to hello world class and it will print the get message so let me run this code hello world okay so this is your uh, simple application spring application that's all for simple spring application and basic introduction of spring thank you